Hey, Tommy, uh, what Jeep are you driving? This is our first generation Jeep Liberty. This is a super cheap Jeep. We paid about $5,000 for it all in with the mods. This is a brand new Jeep Wrangler. It was about $65,000. So Tommy, today we're gonna find out if a $5,000 Jeep can keep up with a $65,000 Jeep and if you need to spend a lot of money to have a lot of fun. Absolutely, so we've got a fun, challenging off-road trail up here in the Colorado Rockies, and we're gonna see what is what. Introducing the next great Jeep idea, Jeep Liberty. Full of innovations and legendary capability. And now, your eyes are fine. Nature has never seen anything quite like it. Jeep Liberty, incredibly capable, surprisingly affordable. This is a 2007 Jeep Liberty, the first gen known internally as the KJ. Now we bought this Jeep stock with about 200,000 miles on it for about 3,300 bucks. From there, we put a $500 budget boost lift kit on it. We slapped on a set of steel wheels and these new Falcon Wild Peak RT tires. And then of course, David and I built that custom push bar in the front, which kind of looks a little bit like a Remax logo, but that's the whole point of this Jeep. It's fun, it can be done at home, and all in, we're about $5,000 into this, um, not Wrangler, Liberty. No, 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 not a Remax. It's a coat hanger, Tommy. It's Just call it hanger. what it is. We were going for a stinger, but it was our first attempt. But at least we have recovery points now. All right, so Tommy, this is a standard Rubicon Wrangler, but check out what I can do. Oh, that's pretty rad. Yep, that's right, it's got air suspension. So this is a 2023 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon with the Extreme Recon package and the four corner AccuAire air suspension kit, which allows you to lift and lower the Jeep at the push of a button. You're having too much fun with that there, Dad. <laughs> I could do this all day, Tommy. All right, Tommy, so, you know, prices of Wranglers have gotten well, I wouldn't say out of control, but certainly out of hand. Um, they're still, get this, selling it about 30% over sticker. So the question is, can we have as much fun with an old Jeep as with the new expensive Wrangler. Absolutely, Dad, and even used Wranglers are very expensive. These Liberties are kind of the black sheep in the Jeep lineup, and honestly, I think that's an unfair assessment because for a small amount of money, you can have a lot of fun, and uh, parts are cheap on these Liberties. We were able to modify this thing for under two grand to give it a little bit of a lift, a little bit more clearance. Okay, a little bit more rubbing in the back, apparently, but this should be a fun day out on the trail. I agree, and the best part about that Jeep is it's got a four low. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the cool things about these Liberties, right, is they competed against cars like the Honda CRV. They were just designed to be family hauling crossovers, more or less, but Jeep actually baked in a lot of off-road goodness. So we have a true low-range transfer case. We have a solid rear axle. This Jeep is trail rated, which means it was up to Jeep standard of off-road worthiness back in the day. So, you know, it's kind of neat. Yeah, and you know, obviously I've got all the goodies, right? So I've got a disconnectable sway bar. I've got front and rear lockers. I even got air suspension, right? So I am riding on, you know, the plushest of plush rides, but let's face it, that's not what off-roading is about. It's really about just having fun on the trail and let's see if you have as much fun as I do. Something tells me that won't be a problem, Dad. Now I'm climbing up these little, uh little ridges which test the approach and departure angle as well as the ground clearance and the cool thing about these liberties is a wheelbase is just 204 inches which is in between the wheelbase of a two-door and a four-door wrangler so they're nice and short and that should give me um, a lot of clearance out here on the trail oh boy dad we got to do a little bit more clearancing to the rear end this two inch budget boost on the suspension allowed us to fit these 31 and a bit tires but um not comfortably oh i'm a little stuck here I see you're already stuck. Come on, you can do it. Come on, Jeep. There we go. Look at that. A little bit of throttle. We are aired down in this Liberty to about 20 PSI. We're letting these Falcon tires do their thing. So far, so good. Oh, yeah. Come you are working harder than I am. I'll give you that. Well, I don't have the ground clearance or the brake lock differentials or the standard locking discs that you have. I'm going uh, kind of old school on this uh, 
this liberty with, with open diffs, but it did feel like I was getting some traction control intervention, so there might be some early form of BLD in this 07 liberty. I'm not quite sure yet. We're gonna have to play with it a little more. Yeah, the other cool thing, you know, about that Jeep, and I know you're rubbing, is I can't stress this enough, but tires really are the magic of the off-road equation. Yeah, this is my first time off-road with these Falcon Wild Peaks RT tires. It's a, um, a pretty cool offering from Falcon, and I'm excited to see how they perform. Now, I'm going to get a little articulated here, Dad. Try to be smooth with it. I will say, I could probably use a little bit more gearing on this Liberty. Oh, but usually I scrape there in most vehicles. And I didn't scrape in the Liberty. That was pretty cool. This video is brought to you by our friends over at Onyx Off-Road. They are the number one off-road trail navigation software. It integrates with Apple CarPlay. Not that I have Apple CarPlay in this old Jeep, but even cooler than that, I can download maps and then use those maps offline up here in the mountains to know exactly where I'm going and know exactly what I'm getting into. So let's talk about pricing on Liberties. You can pretty consistently buy these Jeeps for between four and $5,000 in good shape, a little lower if they're higher mileage like this car. And you know, the thing about Liberties is people that have never owned Liberties love to hate on them. They like to call them the fake Jeep, the Barbie Jeep. But the weird thing about these vehicles is the owners I've talked to, just about every single one loves or loved their Liberty. People really seem to connect with these vehicles when they were new and they sold literal millions of these Liberties. So even though they're pretty hated in today's market, back in the day, a lot of people really fell in love with the KJ Liberty. All right, Tommy, we're coming up on truth of day here. So we got a pretty rocky section and then we'll get to the uh, kind of why intersection and you decide if you want to go truth or dare. So uh, truth is left, dare is right. Oh yeah, dad, I think I have to do dare. You know, if you're going to do it, I got to give it a try in the in the cheap Jeep here. How are you liking that uh, Wrangler, by the way? Do you have your, uh, your, your locker on? Do you have your sway bar disconnected at all? I've disconnected my sway bar but I have not locked anything because, you know, it makes it hard to turn and I don't think I need to lock anything at this point. I think you're right. Yeah, it's um, it's amazing where even a open diffed JL Wrangler will go, especially with the, the nice uh, droopy suspension of the, uh, the Rubicon with the sway bar disconnected. You're just crawling over everything. Now, I'm a little worried about you, dude. I mean, I've got underbody protection basically over every vital part of this Jeep, you know, including the diffs. You, on the other hand, yeah, I got nothing. I've got no underbody protection except for a custom skid plate we made in the front with David. But the fuel tank is unprotected, the transfer case is unprotected. So even though this thing was trail rated, this is kind of a base model and there's not a lot of underbody protection on this. It's funny because we also bought the uh, second generation Liberty for our cheap Jeep series and that has complete underbody protection. Well, that depends on which first generation of Liberty you get. Like if you get uh, the Hadlam lights up through code. Renegade, I do believe that one's got to get the nice skid plate, but this thing didn't even have a front tail hook, so we welded them on the front just so we can uh, pull this thing out of the skid stuck. But you know, dude, so far, with these uh, 31-inch tiles, maybe not a little bigger, close to the 32s, I'm really impressed with how this thing is doing. It's, uh, it's got a lot of clearance, it needs to up. Alright, let me finish. I want to watch you go up uh, there, so let me go up here. I'm going to park my Jeep, and I'm going to see how uh, our cheap cheap is doing, okay? So give me a second, I'm gonna park this. I'm really curious how, how, our, how our guy is gonna go do, uh, because uh, let's face it, uh, this one is a hundred, well, more than a hundred times more expensive than that one. So it should just waltz up this thing. Yeah, you may wanna check your math there, Dad. It's not a hundred times more expensive. It's not a $500,000 Jeep. Sorry, I'm really bad at math. So let's go 20 times more expensive, is that right? Not not quite. No, nope, not not quite. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's there's a pretty big margin here. It's closer to maybe 12 times more expensive. Okay, good thing I'm not an astrophysicist because we have all kinds of weird uh, numbers going up. All right, don't fire you. It's less than you have to struggle one more. This thing hasn't slipped a single tire. Come on, little buddy. Scraping a little on the fender flare. It's not such a big deal though. Definitely struggling a little bit here. The great thing. 
thing is, I've got this big pointy rock, which in a modern car, I'd be really worried about scraping the bodywork. But in your cheap cheap, that's what these puppies are for. All right, we're gonna get fully articulated here. Let's see if we can make it up this obstacle. Oh, beast! Look at that! We definitely have some brake lock differential in play because that was fully well, articulated. You didn't make it look easy, but you didn't make it look hard. This thing is a little beast! I'm really having a lot of fun! Um, and you know, I'm not worried about it, right? If I was in your $60,000 plus Rubicon, you worry about the beautiful firecracker red paint, and you worry about maybe uh, scratching up those expensive wheels. This thing, I've got cheap steelies on, you know, crappy paint that's got some clear coat fade. It's awesome. Hey dude, I have an idea. Okay, what's your idea? So you know, we've been up this trail a hundred times in a Wrangler Rubicon, right? There's nothing here that's been challenging. Okay. So how about if we finish off in this Jeep, and let me drive, I wanna try, come on. Okay. That one's kind of, not boring, but you know what I mean? There's no challenge. I feel like this is a challenge. You said the beauty of the Liberty is you don't care about what happens to it, right? Well, yeah, I mean, to, to more or less an extent, yeah. This is the sawtooth. Uh, it's a test of breakover angle. So are you going to let me gonna go over this? Because it's definitely going to hit. Well, we don't have underbody protection, which is a problem. But yeah. we can give it a go. So we'll crawl up the steep um, rock face. We'll descend down this pointy jagged area and we'll see what happens. All right, let's do it. Fair warning, if you don't like the sound of metal grinding on rock, then this is probably the part you want to fast forward through this video. I think we'll be just fine, Dad. Bring her on up. You know, I am impressed by how well you can see over everything here. I love everything about this Jeep, uh, but the coat Driver. hanger. Driver. Driver. Yep, you got three feet. Okay, here we go. We can do a little bit more driver. I want to take you over the hard part. Okay. Oh. Um, yep, keep going. Oh, this is gonna get this is gonna get scratchy. Yep, you got two feet to the, the crest. Oh here we go. Oh. oh you're gonna clear it. Just the just the uh, cross member. <laughs> and the exhaust. <laughs> oh, look at that nice and slow over the back, because the fuel tank's in the rear, there's no protection. <laughs> you don't tell me that was a hoot. You're right. When you don't give a rats, you know what? It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little Jeep for uh, for the money. I'm really, really pretty impressed. I think, you know, we should maybe hold on to it for a little bit longer and uh, try to do some harder stuff with it going down the road. So I have one last challenge for you, uh, and that is you take it up the other way, the hard way. Are you up for it? Oh, sure. All right, come on in. Let's see if you can do it. Yeah, you're right. Maybe we'll take it at an angle. We'll try to get wheels in the air. Oh yeah, baby. The Jeep is a little beast. Well, hold on, how did that happen? You gotta go harder, go back. I just did the hard part. No, no, go back, go back, come on. Let's try it harder, go back. It was the hard part. Oh no, I'm gonna make you go harder. Come on. Slow, slow, slow. Go around the tree and come back the other way. Okay. Ran out of a...
That is pretty brutal. That is pretty brutal. I have to go a little bit more to the right. I'm hopping too much. I'm gonna blow a diff if I'm not careful. You want to just go up this way? You can do it this way. Okay. Come out of this way. You can try that. I don't think that's gonna be any easier, Dad. I mean, the big question is, did you have more fun than me? I think I did, honestly. I think I had, you did, actually, yeah. I really enjoy driving the Liberty <laughs> off-road, and for 5K, you get a pretty capable, very comfortable, um, and, you know, somewhat reliable, let's be honest, Jeep that uh, will take you places that your typical car wouldn't. And if you guys are interested in seeing the transformation of this Jeep from a basic urban transport to a serious off-roader, head on over to All TFL because we'll be publishing that series the entire month. All right, Tommy, let's head on home. Yeah, we'll see you on the next one. So look, is the Jeep Liberty a reliable, dependable, everyday driver that you could probably put 30,000 miles on every year, never change the oil, never have to worry about? No, I mean, this is not a Land Cruiser. It's not a 4Runner. It still is, at the end of the day, a 20-year-old Jeep manufactured by Daimler Chrysler, which was not the peak of reliability for the brand. But, the other thing too is you get what you pay for. A 2007 Forerunner of this era, right, would probably run you 12, 15, 18, 20 thousand dollars. A Liberty is going to run you four or five thousand dollars. So if you're just looking for a fun, you know, Jeep to cruise around in on the weekends, you can do so in a Liberty, save a lot of money, and have a lot of money left over for when it breaks. And now. Is it been unreliable for us? No, you know, we put a couple thousand miles on this Jeep in the last couple months and it's been quite good. Even with 200,000 miles, everything works on this Jeep and it's been, uh, it's been a really pleasure to drive. That isn't to say that I would feel comfortable daily driving this for 30,000 miles a year without knowing something's gonna go wrong, but so far, you know, granted with our small amount of mileage, it's been, it's been really good.